How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today I'm going to be telling you guys my list of sports cars that I would probably never own. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with these cars just personally. I wouldn't own them and I'll explain why. Some of them are good reasons, some of them are bad reasons, some of them I just don't like. I'm not trying to offend anyone or talk bad about their car. I've made some bad decisions too buying cars and there's some cars that I currently own that I would never buy again. I'm looking at you. But yeah, this is just my opinion, my personal list of cars that when I'm shopping, I completely ignore. Now, one thing that you can't ignore is the amount of savings you can save when you shop with Timu. What's up, guys? Timu and I have partnered up to save you guys money on products you want so you can go ahead and keep buying more car parts. Timu is a shopping app that provides high quality products at affordable prices. They have a lot of different categories and they have really amazing coupons. Right now, they're having a site-wide sale of up to 90% off. They also offer free shipping and free returns up to 90 days, so if you're not satisfied, you can send it back. Before I ask you guys to download the app, let's take a look at what they sent me. I gotta choose a couple of these items, and so one of the ones I really wanted since I just moved into a new house was a wireless security camera. We'll go ahead and set it up in a second and see how it works. I also went ahead and ordered up a little portable vacuum that way i don't have to bust out the big shop vac every time i want to clean something out of my car we'll test this out in a second lastly i got a couple pairs of headphones because you can never have too much music while you're working on your car we have some wireless earbuds right there and big studio wireless over the ear headphones we'll be trying all this out right now first impressions of everything is the quality is amazing especially for the price you really can't argue with their prices you're getting some good stuff without breaking the bank First thing I want to try out is the portable vacuum. Luckily, it came with some battery in it. In the package, we have a couple extra filters, a brush, and a charging cable. And perfectly, I have a mess right here. Let's clean it up. The vacuum did what it was supposed to do. It sucked up the little debris and will definitely be convenient for car guys. As you can see, it works. It's nice and convenient. This way, you don't have to bust out the big shop vac. It'll just get that quick mess, clean it up, and you can just store it in your car. Easy peasy. Next up, we'll be trying out the headphones. They go pretty loud. I was really impressed on how easily these paired up, and the sound quality is really impressive for the price. Can you hear the music? They work. I'm not gonna lie, they work. <laughs> they're, they're pretty loud, the quality's pretty good too. I mean, I, I don't notice anything different with my AirPods. And they charge with USB Type-C. We're gonna try out the big Berthas right now. See how these are, these might be my new, uh, editing headphones because I don't have wireless ones. Similar to the earbuds, the audio quality on these were nice as well. Super light and the pads were comfortable. Take a quick listen. <laughs> Lastly, we're gonna try out the uh, security camera, which I really wanted so I can babysit my cars when I'm not here. <laughs> so we have a wall mount right here, that way you could secure it. It looks like it's got a quick adjustment point, which is nice. Unveiling the camera. This thing is pretty hefty, I'm not gonna lie. Once I got it all set up, I'm not gonna lie, I was shocked. The quality was really high. And now I get notifications every time somebody enters my driveway. I love it. So guys, if you wanna support the channel and you wanna save some money, download the Timu app in my description. Click that link where you can get $100 worth of coupons for free. Click the link and support the channel, guys. Thank you, Timu, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Now that that's over, let's dive into the list. First, car on this list, and I actually passed up on this car because uh, the Civic was just a better option for me. We're talking about the Bugatti Chiron. Um, it's just a little bit too much for me. I mean, honestly, I don't see what the hype's about. Uh, it was either that or the Civic. I went with the Civic. It makes more sense to me. So I don't need to explain myself. <laughs> All jokes aside, let's start the list. So this first one is, is kind of a little picky, and it makes sense why people buy them. I just, I just, it, it couldn't be me. It couldn't be me, bro. I'm talking about scat packs. I love how scat packs look. They look aggressive. They look cool. When I see them down the freeway, I'm like, oh, let me go pull up on this Hellcat real quick. Let me go pull up on this wide body scat pack. I mean, it's a good looking car. I just, again, I personally, personally, I don't know if I would want to settle for a scat pack because we all know the scat pack owner wants the Hellcat. We all know that they went in there wanting the Hellcat but they didn't get approved for it or it's just a little bit too out of their budget, which it is. The Hellcats are expensive. I'm not gonna lie. Like I don't wanna pay 1300 bucks for a Hellcat. That's a lot of money. I pay less for my goddamn McLaren, but that's also because I put a larger down payment. Point is, 
that's a lot of money for a Hellcat, especially when you're getting smoked by 400 horsepower Hondas out there. It's a lot of money. But the Scat Pack is just like the worst version of it. It's big, it's not nimble, it's not fast, it's just like a gas guzzling sedan without any of the cool things that the Hellcat has. This is actually the car that made me want to make this list because I am looking to, for something to replace the goddamn STI and I'm looking for something that is still convenient like a sedan, four door, a truck, something like that. I was thinking well, a Scat Pack would be kind of cool. They make five or 400 something horsepower, you know, it'd be kind of cool. Then I'm like, no, it wouldn't. I would lose every race I ever try to race unless I'm picking on a Honda Odyssey or a G35 and even then a G35 might beat it. I, I, it's just not for me. They're great looking cars. I completely see the appeal. If you want a Dodge and you can't afford a Hellcat or something, I completely see the point of them. I personally would just not get that. I think there's a better option out there. The Chevrolet SS sedan, I think is a better option. If I were going for a four door V8 sedan, that's what I would get. This next car isn't really a surprise. Uh, I'm pretty sure most people wouldn't buy this car. But then again, this is one of the most popular cars at the moment. I'm talking about BRZs, GT86s, FRSs, all of that. I'm, I'm more re referring to the older generation. I haven't seen too many of the newer generation ones. And they're all right, they're whatever. I haven't driven either. But I could already tell I wouldn't want to. In my opinion, the GT86, BRZ, FRS, whatever the hell again you want to call it, it's just an underwhelming car. I really wish Toyota or Subaru, whoever's in charge, I really wish they just made either a turbo version using the same setup as the Subaru or throw a fucking V6 in there. I don't know, do something different. Like, it's just a little too slow. Hell, go back in time, go to the junkyard, get some goddamn K24s, throw that fucking thing in there. At least you'll have some power then. I remember when I was first seeing them when they just came out, I thought it was a great looking car. I thought it was a fast car. I thought it was sick. And then it turns out that it's a really underpowered kind of sluggish car. Again, probably really fun in the canyons. It's better to drive a slow car fast, Drew, than a fast car slow. If you can't drive, just say that. Cause I could drive this thing fast or slow and it's still fun. I feel like I need to give an alternative if I were to get something of that size, 350Z, maybe ND Miata. I think those would both be better options in my opinion. The 350Z obviously packs more power and is a lot more, in my opinion, usable, I should say. Like you could turn it into a drift car, you could turn it into a drag car, you could turn it into whatever you want, a track car. The ND Miata already beats the BRZs and shit, so it's already faster and it's probably more nimble and stuff. So it's just like, if you're gonna get a small car, get the all-time small car. But Miatas, you're not off the hook yet. Next car I would never own, NA Miata, maybe NB Miata. My brother has an NC and it's all right, but I don't think I'd own one. I would probably own an ND though, but NA, NBs, too small. TikTok car scene just completely destroyed those cars for me. It's just way too cringe. I can't handle it. And I personally, I just, I, I can't do it. I just, I can't do it. Unless I'm buying one that already has like an LS swap or a Jay-Z or something, just something stupid. I would not be buying a rundown, ran through whore Miata that every TikToker has already made videos on. I see the appeal. They are like great if you make them for the track. I think if you go and buy one off of OfferUp right now, with all 150, 200,000 miles, it's not a track ready car. It needs, the whole car needs to be gone through. Every seal is gonna be leaking, every bushing, every control arm, everything's gonna be fucked. So these people that think that they can just pick up a Miata and, ah, oh, bro, I'll, I'll be on your car's ass in the canyon. You, you, you don't know, like, you don't know about these Miatas, bro. These things are just crazy in the canyon. You, you won't be able to outrun me, bro. They have this, like, notion that <laughs> Mazda made this car to compete like right out of the gates and maybe it was true when it came out but your 200,000 mile miata is not hanging with a lot of these modern day cars i'm just gonna say that obviously if you've gone through it and changed out all of the weak links then sure i can completely believe it but it's not happening your salvage shuttle miata not hanging with most cars in the canyon this next car has kind of been tempting me i mean it's not really a car it's an engine but this next group of cars has been tempting me but i just don't think I can get past the negative press about this motor. And we're talking about the N54. So we're talking 335i's, older ones. Anything that comes with an N54, I don't really want to touch it. Like, I think I learned my lesson. The memes of the Subarus being bad turned out to be fairly true. So I can only imagine the memes on the N54s, they're probably even more true. I, I'm, I don't want to touch that car with a 10-foot pole. I see the appeal. It's a very cheap, 
very tuner friendly option like it, it, it's a great motor it's just plagued with issues that other more superior motors don't have the b58 is by far a better i think comparison to a german 2jz than the n54 just because it doesn't seem like the b58 has these plaguing issues that the n54 does i see the appeal i've seen people make them stupid fast i've seen damn near just like full bolt-on ones just like destroying hellcats they're quick they're cool and i see the appeal but personally i don't like headaches i like being able to drive my cars which is why I try not to have them broken for too long. I know that's kind of ironic being that the Civic's been broken for a while, but we completely changed the whole build on that, so that's a little different. But yeah, every week having a different issue would just kind of annoy me. I see the appeal, but one thing people say is just save up and get the N55 motors. Apparently, they're a bit more reliable. I can't speak any fact on that, but that's what I've seen online. Most people recommend skipping N54. Go get a car with an N55, and you'll be happier. All right, next car. This one I just don't like. I don't really have any reasons for not liking it. Genesis Coupes, just get the fuck out of here. I don't know. That's that, that car's just not for me. I don't know what it is. I'm not trying to sound sexist or anything, but I feel like most people in SoCal that drive a Genesis Coupe are a woman, and it fits them great. I don't think it would fit a six foot man great. It's again, I'm not trying to be sexist. I'm not trying to get canceled here. I'm just saying, it just doesn't seem like it. Like me, I can't picture myself climbing out of that car at a car meet and feeling tough. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a fast Genesis. I don't think I've ever seen a good sounding Genesis. I don't think I've ever seen a really good looking Genesis. Like there's some decent looking ones, but I've never been blown away, bricked up looking at a Genesis coupe. Again, my own personal opinion, don't, don't hate me for it. There's some people out there that get bricked up looking at Teslas and you're getting mad at me for not getting bricked up at looking at a, a different car. We're like, well, come on. I mean, it's a very popular car. I'm sure there's some appeal to it. But once again, if I were to get something like that kind of area, I'd probably just go like 350, 370Z. I think the Genesis Coupe does have back seats, so that might be a little bit of a plus, but uh, the styling, the car, the motor, everything about it, it's like mid to me. Prove me wrong. If you have a fast Genesis Coupe in SoCal, send me some pictures, send me some videos. I want to see one on slicks. Maybe I'll get bricked up. Maybe it might just work. Anyways, the last car, or I guess cars. This one's not really going to be a surprise to anyone, but I don't see myself ever buying an infinity g35 g37 that car right now is just hot 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 because of takeovers cops do not like those cars most car enthusiasts aren't liking those cars right now it is a car that is just like destroying the car scene because they're super accessible they're rear wheel drive they're pretty sporty and you can pretty much beat on them and not give a shit because if it blows up who cares it's an infinity g35 I've always kind of seen like the G35s even way back in high school as like the fuckboy car. I would just picture the guy getting out with like, this is, again, <laughs> I went to high school probably at a different time than you, but get out with the high Nike socks and the black shorts and the black shirt and shit. Kind of like what the Edgars wear now, but it was like the swag trend back then. You'd have the swag shirts on. I graduated in 2015, so again, might be a different generation, but it was kind of the fuckboy car. The guy that wore camo skinny jeans and shit. Like, that was kind of the G35 car. And now it's like the takeover car. And, uh, I mean, if I were looking to go swing a car, it'd be a great option. Because it's a very affordable, it's very cheap. And they seem to last pretty good in those goddamn pits. But, personally, I think they tainted it for me. They also don't sound good. I've never really heard one that doesn't sound like a marching band. Like, at least with Zs and stuff although very similar i've heard them sound decent maybe the owners just have more respect for their cars and don't put on like jose's muffler delete but i just yeah just no i'm sorry i've seen fast ones too that's the sad part like i had a very good run a long time ago with the mustang i think on its three valve motor and a boosted g35 or g37 and it was a great run it was a really good run it's just sad that you don't see most people building g35s and g37s like that they just I don't even think they get built anymore. They just go to fucking takeovers. They don't build shit. So yeah, once again, I know this is ironic, but if I were to get a car that's similar, again, 350Z, 370Z, something like that. Uh, again, it's, it's the same fucking car pretty much, but I feel like the owners of those just respect them slightly more. Although I will say most 350Zs in SoCal are pretty much beat to hell too. So it is what it is. It's, it's a losing battle. But yeah, that's my list. Those are the cars that I would probably stay away from. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure I can think of more. But as of right now, I'm pretty happy with that list. If you guys want to see a part two of this, let me know down below. And let me know some cars that you would definitely stay away from. 
And don't say, Drew Peacock, I would stay away from your cars because your cars are shit. Don't say that. That's mean. I'm joking. You can say whatever you want. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this. Big shout out and thank you to Timu. Guys, click the link down below. Pick up the Timu app. Save some money. Buy more car parts. We'll live in a happier world if you do that. Anyways, thank you guys. Thank you, Timu. And until next video, peace.